How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. So finally the new RTX 4070 is here, but will it be the GPU to redeem in a video for all of their high prices of the previous 40 series cards? Well, we do hope so because the 70 range was always the best price to performance a card. So will it be the same for this one? Not sure yet, but of course oh, we will see. Now for my review, I have the beautiful Gigabyte Aero RTX 4070 OC, which does also fit perfectly inside my white system. So I'm just glad there are more white GPUs as an option these days. So yeah, you do have one of these. Now pricing wise, the RTX 4070 does have an MSRP of $600. Now unfortunately, I don't have the exact pricing for the Aero, but it will be slightly more than that, maybe around 660 or 700 but you do have the MSRP options of a course for the Windforce. But now that $600 is a more than the 3070, but not a crazy 50% of price hike like we saw with the 4080 compared to the 3080. And even the 4070 Ti being a more than the 3070 Ti. Now it is still $100 more, but we will see if it actually makes up for that, uh, especially compared to a used 3080, let's say. Maybe that could be a better vibe, but more on that later. Now specs wise, the 4070 has mostly the same specs as the 4070 Ti. So less cores and a smaller memory bus compared to the 3080. So we'll see how that translates into performance. Now as for a memory, it also has a 12 gigs of a GDDR6X memory like the 4070 Ti, which is more than the 3070's 8 gigs and also the 10 gig 3080. You did get the 12 12 gig 3080, but that was even more expensive. So I don't think that's going to be the best comparison even, even though most likely you'll want to compare it to the 3070 Discord. Uh, I was more comparing it to the 3080. Now as for the design, the 40 series Aero cards does look better compared to the 30 series. So I have a 3080 Aero right here. And honestly, they do look better. It's a bit bigger, but it's shorter in design. So it will fit in smaller cases easier, uh, which was a problem with some of the uh, larger 40 series cards. Now the fans are the exact same size but the blades are thicker compared to the 30 series and you do still get your dual bar switch for your performance mode and also for your quiet mode. Now for IO, you only get three DisplayPort version 1.4 A's and a single HDMI 2.1 A port. Now I personally would have liked two HDMI's instead, even compared to the 3080 here, it does have five ports in a total. And a lot of my screens still use HDMI and I don't want to get a whole bunch of adapters and everything. So I would have liked more, but it's not the biggest problem for most people I will say as well. Now, if you want to see a more graphics card video, subscribe because I do have have a couple more to come soon uh, on the channel and then also on the second channel linked in the video description. Now as for a power, you again get the new 16 pin power connector with a 2 8 pin adapter. Now I'm still not the biggest fan of the power connector being in the middle of the card. It does look very unneat and uh, no, it's because of the PCB being a lot shorter, only reaching to the middle of the card, but I would have liked it if it was more to the back or somewhere else uh, because it does again look a bit unneat. But but unfortunately, there's nothing that we can really do about that. As for power draw, the 4070 has a rated TDP of 200 watts. And in most games, power draw range around that 200 watts precisely. But I did see spikes upwards to 213 watts as well. Now, compared to all the other cards, the 4070 is actually much more efficient, even compared to the 3070's 220 watts. So that's actually a big plus. Now, moving on to cooling, it was no issue here with an ambient temperature of 18 degrees, the card stayed around the mid 50 degrees at around 60% fan speed. Now that was on the default fan curve and with that the fan does jump from 0 to 60% instantly when the temps hits over 51 degrees. Now you can adjust that if you want to with a custom fan curve but luckily the card was also not too loud where I didn't even really hear that uh, inside of my case even with the side panel open. Now as for coil one, luckily 
there wasn't any of that, so I'm very happy about that. But I do hope that that's not just my card, where some of the other cards will have, but again, luckily mine did not. Now then, as for how the Aero 4070 performed, I paired up with the super toasty i9-3900K, 32 gigs of Kingston's Fury RGB Beast memory, running at 5600 megahertz, and the ZS790 Master Wars board. Now, firstly, how did the 4070 compare it on its own? Well, with all of the games set on Ultra with no DLSS on 1440p, with no surprise, it all of the games reach over 60 FPS. But when enabling a DLSS or FSR and ray tracing, we get a nice up to 20 to 50% increase in performance on the balance preset. This was not with a DLSS 3.0 frame generation, however, only 2.0, as when I did have the other cards, I was unfortunately not able to test that, so I didn't compare it with this card, but we'll talk about that more later. Now, going up to 4K, the frame certainly does drop a bit here, but everything was over 60 FPS except for the bottom two games. Now, that was also again on ultra settings for everything. Now then, when enabling a DLSS, you do get upwards of a 20 to 40% bump in FPS. Now, I will say, unfortunately, I did not have any other 3070 cards to actually compare it to, especially on my new 3900K system. But I was, again, able to compare it to the 3080 10 gig here and also the 4070 Ti. But now, as for how the 4070 compared to all of the other cards, on a 1440p and a 4K, the 4070 was mostly on par with the 3080 10 gig, with it occasionally being a, a bit faster. But compared to the 4070, 70 Ti, it was between 8 to 15 percent slower. Not bad, seeing as the 4070 Ti does cost 25 percent more. Now as for the VRAM, again, the 4070 does feature 12 gigs of GDDR6X like the 4070 Ti. Now that's a nice bump compared to the standard 3070, which only had 8 gigs, and even compared to the 3080, which only had 10, but you did have the 12 gig as well. Now in most games, it never really went above 9 gigs of VRAM, only when playing at 4K, and even then, it was only some of the games that actually went up to 11 gigs. And I can't believe I'm saying this, so we're with DLSS, I don't think VRAM is going to play that big of a, a factor anymore because with a DLSS, it's going to lower the resolution, which does use less VRAM, and then you'll be able to upscale that uh, to the higher resolution. So we'll see how that goes in the future, but currently it doesn't seem like it's the biggest issue, especially with the newer versions of DLSS being released. But that 12 gigs of VRAM will come in handy in a different applications, and maybe in a more productive workloads or 3D rendering. Now quickly talking about the DLSS 3.0, unfortunately I did not test it in this video as some of the other cards that I did, I wasn't able to do that as well. But you will be getting upwards of a like 50% bump in FPS compared to DLSS 2.0. And especially because the 30 series cards that does not have a DLSS 3.0, you do have quite a bit of a, a performance bump compared to the previous cards, even if they are a higher model, let's say like a 3080 here or even like a 3090. Uh, you do have the newer DLSS 3.0 technology, which is definitely going to help out. But of course, currently, not a lot of games actually support that yet. It will be implemented later in the future. So you will have the option then. But currently now, this is how the car suggests it performs in rasterization and some of the other DLSS uh, games. So, but now moving on to non-gaming benchmarks in Blender, the 4070 is a slightly faster than the 3080, but more than 10% slower than the 4070 Ti. In spec view perf, it's a more of a mixed bag with the 4070 sometimes being slightly slower than the 3080, but other times being quite a bit faster. 
So it'll just depend on what the application uses, more cores, more clock speeds, and so on, more memory. Uh, that is where the biggest difference is going to be between all of the different cards. Now then as for clock speeds in a game on stock settings, it averaged 2,835 megahertz. It does seem to drop once a card started to use more than 209 watts of power, where it dropped to just under 2,790 megahertz. With a slight overclock, I was able to boost the clock speed to 2,940 megahertz and a 20% power increase for the power limits. But overall, it didn't really make that big of a difference in a game, so I just honestly left that off as most people will do. Now in conclusion, when I did my review of the 4070 Ti and said it was a good card for the current market, a lot of people lost it on me as saying it's crazy high pricing and all of that. And yes, I do agree with that, but compared to what was out there on the market, uh, it was the one of the best performing cards for the price point. The second hand market is of course a different factor, so we're not talking about that. And no, prices have not come down uh, for the 4070 Ti, even though a lot of people said the 4070 Ti isn't going to sell and Nvidia is going to be forced to drop their prices. They didn't and that is looking to be the case till now. Well now you do have a somewhat of a cheaper option cheaper i will say again depends on your definition of cheap but the 4070 is around 100 dollars or 20 percent more compared to the 3070 after two years so it is more but it's not that big of a price hike so is that too much well that's going to be up to you to decide but it is somewhat in range with the increase of prices over the years and for me, that's understandable, especially kind of with inflation. People don't like that. I mentioned inflation as well. So yes, it is more, but you are getting a better card, a better technology, more performance out for just a slightly bit more, especially when comparing it to like a 3080, which was pretty much at the same price. So you are getting a roughly a faster 3080 at a $200 less when you're comparing the original price point, but you are also getting a less power draw, which in my books is a pretty decent deal. However, you do have the option of going the use a market route where you can get a 3080 between like $400 to $600. Some of them are just still crazy high in pricing for some reason. Uh, and then also the 3090 between $600 to $800. So there are different options out there for you, but honestly, I would just rather go new because a lot of the previous 30 series cards was used for mining. So they're not necessarily used up, but uh, they definitely worked quite a bit and they're out of warranty if you buy some one of the first generation ones and they don't have all of the new features that the 40 series cards do have. So going the new route does sound a bit better in my opinion. But of course, it's all up to you to decide. Do you want to go for a used market route? Maybe you can get some really nice deals on a 3090 or even a 3090 Ti. We never know, maybe prices will come down in the future. So you do have that as an option. Or of course, you can just go for the new 4070 series. And looking at a price to performance, this card really does seem to perform really well. So it just depends on what you can actually get this card for as well. Hopefully not too much, but you do have this as a cheaper option. And now we'll just see once a 4060 Ti actually comes out, how that will perform. But compared to the 4070 Ti, Honestly, this is a much better bet in my opinion. But uh, that's pretty much it. If you are in the market for a new GPU, uh, links will be in the description and down below. A big shout out to Gigabyte South Africa for sending the car over for a review. If you guys enjoyed this review, please like, subscribe, and comment like always. And I'll check all of you guys next time. Cheers, guys.